Kia ora. Welcome to this Waka Katahi Motor Trade Association video. The aim of this video is to highlight some of the key steps required to maintain and service this park brake. Cart and shaft park brakes are fitted to virtually all NB class vehicles in our current fleet. They're also fitted to a lot of small passenger service vehicles and some NC class vehicles. The vehicle behind me is typical of the type of vehicle that's fitted with a cart and shaft park brake. You'll see that it's mounted to the rear of the transmission and it works by locking up the rear drive shaft. This is just a typical drum brake. It's self-energising, which means it can work in both directions. Many vehicles will have a handbrake lever similar to what's in your car. There are, however, quite a few that have what we call a hockey stick design. Before any work starts, one of the most important things you need to remember is to slacken the park brake adjuster off at the handle before you do any other work on the park brake unit. So once the cable is completely slack, that means you can get into the park brake assembly and have a good look at all the other componentry. Before removing the drive shaft, you may need to take off the drive shaft loop or any other componentry that's stopping you getting the drive shaft off. Make sure the vehicle is securely chocked before undoing the drive shaft. Once the drive shaft is released, we'd encourage you to have a good look at the universal joints and the spline while you've got it off. So once the drive shaft is out of the way, take a look at all the components around the carden shaft park brake. You may need to remove the port for the inspection hole so that you can get to that later on when you're adjusting the brake. Look at the drum, look for any signs of heat damage, corrosion, signs of oil contamination, and take an inspection of the actual mechanical parts of the brake on the outside where the cable comes into the drum unit and where it attaches to the actuator. If necessary, slacken off the adjuster so that the drum comes off cleanly. Once the drum is removed, you can look at all the componentry inside the drum unit. Looking at the shoes, make sure the linings aren't marked or broken or contaminated. Make sure the actuator is not worn or excessively corroded. Make sure the operating part of the park brake cable is securely mounted in the back of the gearbox and ensure the adjuster is free and clean. An important thing to check is obviously the surface of the brake drum. If that has been sitting around for some time, you'll notice it will be corroded. If it's been used while the vehicle's been in motion, you may even find that the drum is scored or overheated. If that's the case, there may need to be some replacements. With the drum off, you may need to clean any surface corrosion with emery cloth. This ensures that the brake shoes have got a nice, clean, dry surface to bite into. Be sure you take all precautions against the dust. With the drum clean and checked, using brake clean is a good way to get rid of the dust and dirt from inside that drum. The brake linings too will need to be cleaned and emery cloth to ensure that you've got a clean, dry surface for the drum. This will give you an opportunity to see if there's any markings on the lining, any kind of wear, or any contamination. Again, brake clean is the ideal cleaner for any kind of drum brake. Make sure all components are clean and dry, ensure any loose material is removed. If the shoes require replacement, follow the manufacturer's instructions on how to replace the shoes. Make sure the cable is not kinked or corroded or split, or twisted, or seized in any way. With the drum refitted, use your tool or flat-bladed screwdriver to carry out the adjustment to the foundation brake. Take the adjustment up so that the shoes are tight against the drum. Then slacken the adjuster so that you just get a small amount of movement. Spinning the drum while you do it is the most ideal way to center the shoes and to make sure that they're adjusted correctly. Follow the manufacturer's instruction for this setting. Once the adjustment is made, put the cover back over the inspection port and replace your drive shaft, making sure that you put all the parts that you've taken off back in the right order. Make sure all the drive shaft connections are tight and once the drive shaft is secure, follow the manufacturer's instructions for torquing the bolts up. 
Refit any components you remove to get the drive shaft out of the way. Again, follow the manufacturer's instructions and retorque if necessary. The final part of the procedure is to make sure that you've got the correct adjustment at the cable end of the handbrake lever. At the end of the procedure, you want to make sure that the brake is set to the manufacturer's specification. Make sure the number of clicks lines up with their setting and that it's not too difficult to apply. Don't be tempted to over adjust the park brake cable. The main thing is to get the back end correct before you set this part of it. Once the vehicle is back together again, you need to confirm the performance of the park brake by either carrying out a stall test or if you have one, a roller brake machine. Thanks for watching. If you require more information, head to the Waka Katahi or Motor Trade Association website.